Before we get started with today's video, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who supported and watched um, our previous video, Why You Shouldn't Take Your Dog For A Walk. I was blown away by the feedback and the response we got to that video, so thank you very, very much. Uh, for your feedback and I'm really glad you enjoyed the video. One of the things I spoke about in that video was brain games and how easy it is to give your dog mental and physical exercise at home without going to a large amount of effort or expense. As promised, today's video is going to go into more depth on brain games, what they are and how do you do them with your dog. brain games? Well, they're pretty self-explanatory. It's any kind of game that exercises your dog's brain. The type of brain games that we often play are related to the dog's sense of smell. A dog's nose is really its primary modality of how it interprets the world around it. So the nose is really well geared to dealing with a lot of information and sorting it out into relevant or not relevant. We can draw parallels to this with our sense of sight or our sense of hearing. In this video, we're gonna go through some brain games that you can play with your dog at home. The whole point of the brain games is to exercise your dog's mind and the dog's body. Obviously, be sure that none of the games or none of the components that you use in the games can potentially harm the dog. And don't make the mistake of leaving things out after you've played brain games because the dog's not going to stop playing the game just because you're not there. Our demo dog for our brain games video today is Ripley, otherwise known as the world's naughtiest dog and that's not even an exaggeration. These videos have been shot over two days so don't be surprised when you see a change in location. Yeah, doesn't matter if you throw it off as long as the dog's making contact with the platform. Go on, go on, go on. Yay, good girl, good job. Go on, go on, go on, go on. And it's okay if they get a little bit frustrated. This is also, yes, good girl. This is also part of the game for them and part of them learning to think a problem through and not just immediately rely on you to show them how to do it. Yes, I've got lots of treats here. Go on. No. Go on. Uh-uh. Uh. Go on. Yeah, good girl. Good. And then I can give her a little bit of a jackpot. Good girl. Go on. Go on. Yes, good girl, nice, nice, whoops, good. So the cue I'm using for her is go on, like you can obviously use anything that you want to with your dog. Good, go on, good girl, nice puppies, good job. And it goes without saying that your platform obviously needs to be appropriate to the size of your dog. Good girl, good job pups. You're now going to see the value of teaching that exercise. It gives us an ability to set up quite a few different uh, brain games that we can play with our dogs. Go on. Good girl. Uh -uh. Yes, I know. I've got a big, a big container full of treats there. Go on. Good girl. Good girl. Wait. You can tell your dog wait or stay. So this game is going to be find the treat under the cups. Wait. And we have five cups here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one treat, wait, and we're going to put the cup over it. Okay, get it. Good girl. Good. Good. Go on. <laughs> uh -uh. Go on. Uh-uh. Puppies, you found it. Go on. Good girl. Uh-uh. Go on. Good girl. Good. Wait. 
And obviously you can start mixing this up. You can change the cup so that the dog has to use their nose to find it. These cups are sealed at the top. To make it a bit easier for the dog, you could uh, make some holes in them so that they can smell whatever's in the cup. Uh-uh, go on. Good girl. So what's nice now is that, uh-uh, go on. What's nice now is that Ripley's actually learning a bit of self-control. So the brain games are not only giving her mental stimulation, they're increasing just general coping skills that we need our dogs to have in our everyday lives. Okay, get it. So now there's one under every cup. And I hope you can hear that little nose working over time. So for a species like us, where our primary modality or the way that we perceive and see the world through our eyes, this might seem like a really simple exercise. But for a species whose primary modality is scent, it's a little bit trickier. Good girl, get it, get it, get it. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, good girl. Yay, good job, puppies. <laughs> Clever girl, good job. Yeah, well done. This is a fun one for the dog. Uh -uh, wait, as you can tell, um, what I've done is I've rolled some treats up into the towel, and what she's got to do is put a little nose down. Uh -uh, wait, <laughs> and unroll the towel to get all of the treats. She's never done this before. Wait, so I'm going to give her just a little, a little sneak peek idea of how this game works. Okay. So often dogs go around the back of the towel thinking that's how they get to this. They can't quite understand what's, what's going on here. And it's helpful just to keep the towel straight for them. No. <laughs> Puppies. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Good job. No. There we go. No, no. Pips. Yes, there you go. Good girl. And we've run out of space here a little bit. Good girl. Let's move it back up. Oops. No, it's here. There you go. Good. And there's more there. There's more here. Puppies. No, this way. Oops. Puppies. This way. Good girl. Yay! Good job, puppies. It's all done. It's all done. It's all done. It's all finished. Good girl. Oh, there was one more left. <laughs> Your nose doesn't lie. Hey, you yeah, good girl. So these puzzles for dogs are great. It's pretty easy to make something similar for yourself at home. Um, you can buy the puzzles ready made or you, with a little bit of creativity you can make something at home. So the way to introduce the dog to this is literally just put a treat in there that the dog can see it, take it. Good. Pop another one in there, good. So this also lets the dog know that it's okay for them to take treats out of here. Then what we can do with this treat is let the dog see it, put it in there and cover it. So now she's got to try to figure out how to get to it. There we go. Oh, good girl puppies. Clever puppy. So you can see what's nice with these little goodies is that they flip over and they slide. So I'm going to do two on that side, stay. And I'm going to do one on this side. Oh, that's a big piece. Okay, get it. I don't know how she's managing to get that out through that tiny little gap. So there's two more in there. Oh, good girl. Good girl. And like I said, there you go. Good job. Every time you hear that nose sniffing, that means the brain is getting a workout. Good girl, Pips. There are more complicated toys that you can use. And we'll pop one in there and we'll slide that over it and we'll pop one in there and we'll just kind of half cover it. Okay. Then we have the, 
the very basic uh, cheap DIY version of the fancy puzzle toy. It's basically a cardboard egg tray and just got some cheap ping pong balls. And what I'm going to do is lift up some of those balls and put treats underneath them. One, two, three, whoops, four. And as always, when we're introducing a new toy, just give the dog a freebie to start. Okay. Good job. Good job, puppies. Good job. What you can do as well is if you find something unusual that you think your dog perhaps hasn't uh, encountered before, and I'm talking in terms of sense of smell here, not a bad idea to hang on to it, um, expose them to it, just, just for some, some novelty interest sake um, in their brain. Obviously make sure that it's safe for the dog to do this. We've got an interesting item today that Ripley's never been exposed to, wait, and that is a snake shed. It'll be interesting to see how she reacts. What's that? How she reacts is by saying, that's boring, please may I have some more cheese. <laughs> you're a bit of a party pooper, aren't you? So you're not fussed by that at all. Okay. Is it boring? And in case you're wondering, um, the reason that I have a snake shed is that uh, we're lucky enough to have a wonderful ball python who, who lives with us. And... Uh, this was her recent shed. I realize it's not something that everyone has in their home. Was that fun, Piffs? Did you have fun? Was it nicies? Oh my goodness, was it so nicies, huh? Was it so nice? So there you have it, guys. Some brain games that you can do with your dogs to provide some mental and physical exercise. As I said, just be sure to make sure that all the components that you use are safe for your dog. Don't leave anything out afterwards. There's a host of other ideas out there. All you have to do is Google brain games or canine enrichment and you'll see there's, there's, a, there's so many different things you can do with your dogs and it doesn't need to take a lot of setup or a lot of time. There's some really clever people out there who've come up with some brilliant ideas for these types of games that you can play with your dogs to give them that mental and physical stimulation that's so important to them. Please remember to hit subscribe, hit the bell so that you keep up to date with our latest uploads and we'll see you next time. Scratching the tip of the iceberg. No? That's just scratching the tip of the pile. <laughs> That's not polite.